This is a question that has been popping up in my comments for a minute now. The S1H has been out for quite a while, I think about three years to be exact. So is it still a relevant camera to buy moving into 2023? Well, I will just say, what is this? This is an S5 and this camera I'm filming with is not an S1H. So where is my S1H? It's gone. My name is Dustin, your video tour guide, and let's get into the reason that I no longer have it. So the reason that I no longer have my S1H is not because I don't think it's relevant anymore. It's because of what I'm shooting more of now. For those of you who have been subscribed to my channel for a minute, probably notice I disappeared for like eight months and didn't upload. Why, you may ask? To keep things brief, I just had a lot going on in my personal life and I was figuring out what I wanted to do with myself, honestly, in regards to video. Plus, over the past year, I just haven't really been doing much freelance work where I personally need to own a camera like the S1H. For example, I did my last wedding video in May. That's right, I'm retired from weddings. I did just shoot a spot for a college football team not too long ago, but all the gear we just rented. I did bring my A7S III because, you know, I had it, so why not bring it? But if I needed to, I could have just rented another one, and that shoot in particular was shot on A7S III's or FX3's, so another thing is I kind of went through I don't want to say midlife crisis, but it was like a rebirth. What I mean by that is my mindset has really changed about life, about what I want to do for a living and what makes me happy. It's almost like I left the matrix and I've been processing that all year. What I want to do when it comes to video is my own stuff. And a lot of my own stuff, what I mean is YouTube. So guess what? That's what I'm doing. I quit my full-time video marketing job to pursue this YouTube and content creation thing. And sure, there are times that I will probably accept a film gig or a shoot, but for my full-time job, at least for now, I decided that I don't wanna do something that involves video and it's just been so much better for my mental health. Anyway, sorry, back to the point of this and I swear this does relate to what I'm trying to say. Since I'm pursuing content creation and YouTube on the side now, I just kind of realized that I don't need my S1H and the S5 pretty much does everything that I need. And even when I do take a few film gigs, the S5 still does pretty much everything I need it to do. Especially with the firmware updates that Panasonic has made to the S5. Since Panasonic has made those updates, it's made this video where I compare the S1H and S5 pretty much obsolete, so thanks Panasonic. There is some things that the S1H has that the S5 does not. Like for example, I will really miss the tilty flippy screen. This one doesn't, see it's not, it doesn't tilt. See, you have to flip it out and then tilt it. The S1H, it would, it would tilt and yeah. I will also miss the LCD screen that was on top. You also can't shoot internal 6K on the S5, or can you? Another cheat code on the S5 coming soon, so stay tuned for that video. And also, stay tuned for this, now hold on, this giveaway right here. Once we reach 10,000 subscribers, I'm giving away this Mike 50mm 1.2 for L mount. I made a video about this lens and I thought I would use it more, but I haven't, so why not just give it give it to you guys? Again, all you gotta do is be subscribed to enter. Anyways, another thing is there's a lot less codecs you can choose from on the S5. The S5 also has less IBIS stops. There's no optical low pass filter on the S5. And the one I'd say I will miss probably the most is that there is no unlimited recording in 10 bit on the S5. There is on the S1H. The big reason is just for YouTube content. Sometimes I may record myself or something else talking to camera for longer than 30 minutes but it's really just a minor inconvenience really at the end of the day, because it's not that often that I have to sh continuously shoot at 10 bit for that long. Now, let me just tell you the big reason as well that I would choose the S5 over the S1H if you're considering buying an S1H or the S5. This is just turning into an S1H versus S5 video now, but it's important. That is the cost. 
The S1H still goes for around $3,000 right now. It's possible that it's on some like Black Friday deals. I have no clue. But the S5 is less than $2,000. And my particular S5, when I bought it, it came with one of the 85 prime lenses for the same price as just the camera. This is a 24 millimeter, but it came with the 85 millimeter for free. I seriously have no clue how Panasonic is selling a camera for this much and making money because that is just a steal. 1700 for the camera and a, and a lens. I don't know. So it really just comes down to what are you shooting that will determine if the S1H is still worth it to you. My recommendation, if you are only shooting on productions where you need like time code, you need the extra codecs that are included, and for that matter, a camera that's approved for Netflix, then yes, the S1H is totally worth it. If you were doing anything below that though, wedding videos, social media content, like little promo videos, YouTube content, concerts, you know, that type of stuff. I think the S5 is just a better choice, just given the cost alone. Invest in more lenses for your S5 instead of the camera, because the S1H is, at the end of the day, it is three years old. Who knows, maybe Panasonic has something up their sleeve coming soon. I have no idea, but one can hope. Speaking of hoping, I hope you found this video helpful and helps you decide on which direction to go if you are considering either the S5 or the S1H moving into 2023. And yes, I'm really excited for the future of this channel. You know, something I just realized is that the backbone of my YouTube channel is kind of built on the S1H. That is literally the reason that I started my YouTube channel and so the fact that I'm not really gonna be making any more videos on the S1H really, I mean, there might be a few every now and again, but for the most part, yeah, there's not really going to be any YouTube videos about the S1H. I feel like I need to like have a moment of silence for my S1H because yeah, it's already gone. There wasn't even a proper farewell video or anything. It just, I sold it like two months ago, but anyways, I just had to put that in the video. Little moment of silence for our S1H brother. Well, anyways, since I got you here, I know it's weird. I'm not wearing a hat right now. Uh, take a look at this. Oh, we have the full set. The 24 millimeter, the 35, the 50 millimeter, and the 85 millimeter. And then the 18 millimeter is on this. I literally just got it. And man, it literally is like the perfect focal length for like vlogging and stuff. I'm really excited to, to make more videos about all this stuff because yeah, got a lot of exciting videos, not just like a comparison video of these lenses and you know, taking a look at this and everything. A lot of exciting stuff happening soon, so. Oh, and the entire video was actually filmed on this 18 millimeter lens, so. And last thing, don't forget about the giveaway for this lens, so be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell button to be notified of future uploads. Until the next video though, happy filming.